Hello, my name's Rasheen and I'm sick of reading. Hello friends and welcome to a bit of a different video from me. Today I'm going to introduce you to my reading journal. I am a complete reading journal newbie. I started this journal in May but I thought it might be fun to take you along on my reading journal journey. I have been wanting a way to record what I'm reading, some of my stats about reading, but a lot to make notes about what I'm reading. When I studied at university and I did classics I would write in the margins of my books. However, now I read a lot of library books and a lot of audiobooks both of which you cannot write in the margins of. So I needed somewhere else to make my notes. And I kind of like the idea of having everything all together. The thing that stopped me is that I used to bullet journal um, and I could never get past one, maybe two months of bullet journaling. I could never stick to it. And I was worried that this would be the same. I've watched a lot of videos about reading journals online and I've seen lots of reading journals on Pinterest and on Instagram and they're all gorgeous, so well maintained and they're so creative and I knew that if I went down that road I would end up with another notebook with only a few pages filled in and then abandoned. I wanted this to be a notebook that was not about perfectionism, it was not about the aesthetic. So I have tried in this notebook to not care about what pens I am using, to not care about my handwriting, which is terrible. And it is especially terrible if I'm writing things down as I'm reading or as I'm listening to an audiobook. If I'm just writing down my thoughts as they come to me, it's not going to be a very aesthetically pleasing journal. But that's not what this is about. And I needed to remind myself that this is not about the aesthetics. This is about having something useful. I have decided to show it on here for any of you who want to start journals, bullet journals, reading journals, but are worried about the perfectionist streak that can prevent you from doing it or feel intimidated by the beautiful bullet journals and things that are out there. But also show myself that it is all right to have a to have a reading journal that is not pristine. That is what I'm going to show you through today. So I hope you have got your cup of tea or whatever it is you prefer to drink and you are feeling nice and cosy. If you like this kind of content please give me a thumbs up so I know that you are enjoying uh, learning about my reading journal and it will help me to know to make more content like this in the future. And if you are new here please subscribe for book recommendations and reviews. This is my reading journal. It is a Lucrum 1917. I'm not sure entirely if that's how you pronounce that. And the reason I chose this one is honestly just because I wanted something that I already owned. I didn't want to get too precious about it. Getting precious about things can trigger my perfectionistic tendencies, and this is not about being perfectionistic. This is about maintaining the thing that I actually want to do. If I made it perfect and was obsessed with always using the right pen or making sure my handwriting was as neat as possible or trying to draw pretty doodles, I would never use it. That's why I think it's important, especially if you are first starting, not to become too focused on what it looks like. If that works for you and that motivates you to use it, then go for it. But it can also be a bit limiting. It can also make me feel a bit frustrated and like I'm not doing it right or well enough and that's why I decided to show this on my channel because this is not pretty at all. I thought this might be helpful if you, like me, want to write down your thoughts but you can't annotate your books and you also struggle with perfectionism. So at the beginning I have an index which was already in the book and as you can already probably see I've written in two different pens, one of which wasn't working properly and that my handwriting isn't the neatest and that the numbers are not actually in numerical order. But it works well enough for me to see what's in the book and I didn't have to worry about drawing anything out. I think this cover page shows you exactly what I was going for. It's just plain and simple. I wanted to be able to open the book and see how long I've been using this reading journal for, but it looks nothing like the beautiful bullet journals that you see on Instagram and Pinterest. It's just straightforward. Maybe one day I will get the urge to decorate it, but that will be for fun and not to try and make something perfectly Instagrammable. The first thing in this journal is my list of all of the books that I have read so far in 2020 with space to continue filling it in. When I first started I was putting in the name of the book, the author, the dates I read it and the 
rating that I gave it, but uh, once I went over the page I forgot to add the dates. Before that is something that would have really annoyed me and I would have felt like, oh no, I have to start again or I have to cover up this page somehow and redo it because it's not perfect, it's not the same as it was before, but now I'm just leaving it and um, I don't know, maybe I will start using the dates on the following page or the next book I write in, um, but I'm just trying not to worry too much about it. The next section is the medium through which I read the book. So I've got Mine P, which is my physical copy I already own, uh, whether I borrowed them from the library, audiobook, ebook, or from script. Um, and the audio or ebook are audio and ebooks that I already own rather than ones that I borrow. If I borrow an audiobook or an ebook from the library, I will just put them in the library section. I find it really useful to know how I'm reading the books that I'm reading. Um, for example, there have been a couple of months here where I have read none of the books on my physical TBR um, and knowing that means that I know how I need to change going forward if I want to read through my physical TBR. I have a gap here, um, I'm not entirely sure what to do with it, uh, maybe it will just end up being overspill from another page. This next section is uh, books that I've made videos about, so it is 12 books that I want to read in 2020, and I will leave that video in the cards, uh, and also I have my five star predictions here, um, and I will leave that video in the cards as well, and I've just kept them here so I can tell that they are ones that I want to read, and I can note when I read them and the rating that I gave them so that when I go to make a follow-up video it's much easier because everything is all together. Another video I made was my read around the world challenge video which I will also leave in the cards and these next few pages are where I write down which country the books that I read come from. Uh, in the past I would have listed all of the countries of the world so that I could keep books from the same country together but I've tried to simplify this quite a lot so when I read a book I'm just writing which country it was about and I'm writing whether it was written by someone from that country or not um, because I want to focus on own voices fiction but I also want to keep a note of books that I have read that are written by authors not from a country because they are set in a country that I haven't read from before um, and I'm also noting things like if it is translated work um, or some sort of genre fiction that I've not read before based on folklore from a specific country for example. And I've left lots of pages clear after this to fill in with countries because I'm clearly very ambitious about my read around the world challenge. I've also got a page here for my spring anticipated releases, which is another video I made that will also be in the cards, uh, and it's something that I will do in the future for my summer anticipated releases and my autumn anticipated releases. And finally we've come to how I actually take notes from books. So this first one here is Underland by Robert McFarlane and I was listening to this on audiobook so I would often have to stop in order to take my notes or to rewind when I wanted to take quotes from the audiobook. So what I take notes of is, for example, I take notes of quotes over field and down into bower of elder and old ash, moss plushing rock to soft gold green. Occasionally I find it a little difficult to read my own handwriting, but I'm trying not to worry about that. I'm quite self-conscious of my handwriting, and that often leads me to give up on projects like this. I have so many notebooks where I have written in a few pages and then given up, and I didn't want to do that this time. This is supposed to be an exercise in anti-perfectionism. As well as quotes, I also record general thoughts, so while I'm reading, if I have an idea or think of anything, I note that down. I also sometimes summarise thoughts or ideas, especially for non-fiction books like this. So for example here I've written that uh, the idea of buried things rising is unsettling, so that was my own thought, and then I've noted down a list of things that he was talking about that have risen from being buried. Usually if I write a quote rather than just summarising the ideas, it is because I love the way that it has been written. I also write down any inspiration that I might get from a book. So for example here I've written Ariadne poem in a cave and that was something that came to me from reading this book. If you don't know I write poetry, um, I will leave a link to my poetry Instagram in the description below. I have left a lot of space here because I haven't finished the book yet and I would rather fill in space than jump back and forwards but obviously if I haven't left enough space I will have to do that. 
The next book I have notes on is Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Davis. This one's a bit different because it was a physical book rather than an audio book um, and that is why I have tried to include page numbers when I take notes so that I can go back and find the original source if I need to. I wanted to point out that I have tried a little bit of colour coding here. It probably won't be consistent throughout the whole notebook because that is not the point. I don't want to have to find the exact same pens again. This is just so that I know what I am looking at. So I have circled in purple things that I want to look up, something that Davis has briefly mentioned that I would like to know more about. And in turquoise, I have other books to read, citations that I would like to check out for myself. So what I aim to do is have this notebook with me whilst I'm reading a physical copy of the book and to take notes that way. If I'm reading an ebook, I try to read it on my iPad to make it uh, the easiest for me to transfer across notes and quotes. And if I am listening to an audiobook, I just have the notebook in front of me and I have make sure to be able to pause and rewind quite quickly because you have to be able to keep up with the speaker. I do also have another method if this isn't possible. For example, if I am out and about um, and I'm walking, it's not always possible to have the notebook with me or to write things down. I will take notes on the notes app on my phone. I film on my phone so I can't show you that but I have sent them to myself on my iPad. So these are the notes that I took when I was reading If BL Street Could Talk and when I get time I sit down and I copy them out into my notebook. It's not always possible to have my notebook with me but if I am reviewing a book or I feel like it's saying something particularly important I want to be able to write it down and for me taking notes in my phone is the most practical way to do that. By allowing myself to take notes on my phone I remove the pressure that I can only read these books when I am sitting down with my notebook at a table. I am able to do it whilst walking around and I'm still thinking deeply about the book. The one thing of pressure is that I have to remember to transfer them into my notebook but I have found by doing that transfer I am helping to ingrain them in my brain. So that is it friends, that is my reading journal. I hope that this has maybe inspired you to start one of your own, especially if you like me struggle with perfectionism and with uh, maintaining your interest in something akin to this. It's been so useful for me when I've been writing reviews or talking about the books that I have read. Even without flicking back through it, just the fact of writing it down has helped aid my memory and really solidify how I think and feel about a book. So I think that they're definitely a very useful thing to have. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It's a bit of an experiment for me, but I hope you liked it. And please remember to subscribe because I will be back the day after tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.